Hey babes, very chill day. I'm just sitting here in my oversized tea and uh, let's just do a quick chit chat session about skincare. Specifically, skincare for decongesting or minimizing clogged pores. Now, some of you may be thinking, you know, I have dry skin, I don't seem to have a problem with blemishes, so why am I sitting here talking to you guys about clogged pores? Well, I did used to have really, really oily and blemish-prone skin in my younger years. I was prescribed Retin-A, twice in fact. So I've definitely had my fair share of clogged pore, oily skin problems, and I think over the years I've learned enough and tried enough products to be able to, I think, give you quite a concise listing of some of the tips and tricks that have really helped me along the way. Now one thing I want to get out of the way before we begin, if you suffer from really, really chronic and very severe acne, it's cystic, it's really inflamed, and it's been going on for very, very long time, nothing that you apply topically has helped very much, please, please, please go get yourself a consultation with a licensed dermatologist, someone who is trained, who is professional, who is experienced and who has a lot of good reviews and a great reputation. I do not say this lightly because it can be very debilitating depending on how severe your situation is and, you know, just visiting a good doctor might turn your life around. Now, it may be a little bit more money up front and it may also be a little bit more of a hassle trying to get a consultation, find a doctor, book an appointment and all that. However, you know, it really beats spending years and years and thousands of dollars trying product after product after product that doesn't really work. This video is very much more for people with combination to slightly or moderately oily skin. You may deal with intermittent issues, clogged pores, blackheads, whiteheads, enlarged pores, that kind of a thing, but not really serious enough to warrant a visit to the doctor, basically. Before I get to all these skincare products, there is one major tip. It's a quick change to your lifestyle. It's something that everyone can do, but it's surprisingly hard for a lot of people. And that would be to reduce the amount of processed or refined carbohydrates in your diet, or generally to design your meals such that you are, one, not snacking multiple times throughout the day. Don't graze. If you have to stick with two to three main meals a day, just do that. Do not constantly graze and eat little bits of food. Also, try to reduce the overall glycemic index of your meals. All this means is to reduce the amount of white carbs in your diet. White carbs meaning very highly processed carbohydrates, you know, like white pasta, white bread, um, unskinned potatoes, white rice, that kind of a deal. If you cannot avoid it, at least make sure that you have some protein, some fats in your meal and plenty of fiber because that slows down the absorption or the release of the sugars into your bloodstream. All you need to remember is insulin can cause a lot of flare-ups and inflammation in your body. It also stimulates your sebaceous glands indirectly. It causes your skin to produce more oil. So if you break out after eating chocolate, it's not because because of the cocoa. It is because of the white sugar. Unfortunately, a lot of studies have shown that sugar is essentially processed in our bodies similar to alcohol. So it is highly addictive. So if you're drinking lots of juice, try to cut down and eat the actual fruit instead. Eat more vegetables, at least, you know, eat more whole grains and just try to reduce the overall glycemic impact of each of your meals. And you should be able to see a difference in not just your mood, but also your skin. Now, of course, sugar doesn't affect everyone equally. I know some really annoying people who can just chow down on chips and chocolate and candy and just refined junk all day, every day. And when they're really skinny and two, they have really, really good skin. Some people are genetically built to tolerate higher levels of sugar in their system. I'm not one of those people. If you are watching this video, if you're concerned about oil and clogged pores, chances are you are to some degree quite impacted by your diet as well. 
Now, one last thing about sugar, besides indirectly stimulating your sebaceous glands into producing more oil and also causing a lot of inflammation in your body, uh, it also will react with protein and fats in your system. This process is called glycation and TLDR, it will negatively impact the collagen in your skin. So besides, you know, early signs of sagging, you get the bulldog jowls, your skin's no longer tight and firm. Also, collagen is what holds your pores closed and tight. You lose it, your pores open up and they stay open. You look like you have really large pores and very textured skin. Now that we've covered all that, let's move on to the actual skincare that has helped me throughout the years. The first thing I'm going to talk about is proper, proper cleansing. Now raise your hand if at the end of the day you take your makeup off with a wipe and then you rinse your face with a foaming cleanser and call it a night. Now, I'm not saying you absolutely cannot do that. It is 100% better than going to bed with your makeup on. However, a lot of the times that is not sufficient to really clean out your pores. Now, one of the things that made a huge difference to my skin back in the day was switching to an oil cleanser. Now, this is the Anti-Oxy Cleansing Oil by Shu Uemura. They have several formulations and this is one of my favorites for slightly combination or oilier skin types because it's an anti-pollutant clarifying oil. Now, besides the Anti-Oxy in the green bottle, the other formula I find to be pretty good for oilier skins is the Pore Finished one. This is the one in the beautiful pink bottle. What you'll find is these will rinse a little bit cleaner than this one, which actually leaves more of a protective film on the skin. If you've never used these before, you are supposed to apply two or three pumps directly onto your made up face. Give yourself a good massage. Make sure there is no moisture or water on your hand or on your face while you are doing it because the moment the water goes on, it will start to emulsify the oil. When you think you're done breaking down your makeup, that's where you start splashing a little bit of water, a little bit more water, a little bit more water. You'll see the clear oil just turn into this milky liquid and then rinse right off. After I rinse off all the broken down makeup, I will pat my face dry gently with a towel and then go on with a second dose of this just to massage and clean out the pores. So the second cleanse is what is going to go into your pores and really clean it out. Very often after about four or five minutes of very gentle massaging around the congestion prone areas, you'll find that you have loosened a lot of the oil plugs which can then be extracted and just pushed out really, really easily. One important tip if you live in a hot water area, high mineral content in the water can make it really hard for you to get a clean rinse. Some people who end up breaking out after using oil, milk or cream cleansers, blame the cleansers. It's probably actually to do with the water in your zone. Most important thing is these oil-based cleansers do the best job of deep cleaning your skin without ever stripping the surface. Now the next important step for maintaining really clear, tight, clean pores is exfoliation. Now there are two ways you can exfoliate your skin. One is manual and the other is chemical. If you're like me in the past, the moment I hear exfoliation, I think scrub, 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 scrub. Gritty, grainy scrubs, microdermabrasion polishes, sonic face brushes, even those exfoliating or cleansing face cloths. The thing to remember is that on a microscopic level, all those grits and grains and scrubs and bristles are never going to be able to give you a really gentle and even exfoliation across the entire surface of your skin. Especially if you're using those gritty, grainy apricot kernel or nut kernel scrubs, you might actually be causing a lot of micro tears in your skin. For a lot of people, this can actually overstimulate and oversensitize your skin, it can cause it to get easily triggered by any other environmental stresses later. Now, as with everything skincare related, individual tolerance will vary from person to person. Some people get great results with Clarisonic brushes. I have never been able to use them without breaking out. If you really want to work on your pores, reduce blackheads and really refine your skin texture, nothing works better than chemical exfoliation. 
By that, I mean acids, and these include everything from AHAs to BHA and also other acids, which I will get to later. The beauty of a chemical exfoliant is the fact that you can apply a very controlled dose around the surface of your skin and get a very, very even exfoliation all around. Of course, you need to be really careful to avoid the eye area and the lip area. But generally, there are many different strengths to work with. You should be able to find one that suits your skin. The number one most important thing to take note of when you are buying an acid exfoliant is that the pH level has to be right. Now, I'm one of those nerds that buys pH testing strips and I will dip it into all my skincare just to check what the pH levels are. Hey, I'm paying good money for skincare. I want to know that it works. Now, one of my favorite slightly stronger glycolic acid toners is Liquid Gold by Alpha H. Now, this is a 10% glycolic acid serum. The pH level is very low, so it is very, very effective. You are supposed to use this only twice a week as a specific skin treatment. You do not use this daily as a toner. You will strip your face raw. Now, again, this formula contains some alcohol. It is there as a penetrating agent to help the formula to work better. I've mentioned before on Instagram that I use this product as a skin reset. So once or twice a week after I've cleansed my face and everything, I will just apply a very light coating of this over my face with a cotton pad and I will just leave it be. No other skincare serum, moisturizer or product on my face for the entire night. The reason being, glycolic acid needs to stay in a relatively low pH to keep working its magic in your skin. So to max out the potential of this product, you do not want to apply other products over your skin too quickly because that just kind of neutralizes the acid. Of course, if you are a newbie and the tingling is really scaring you, then just splash on a little bit of water or just go on with your regular face cream. Just take down the acidity of the product. But if you can tolerate it, please do leave it for at least 10-15 minutes to do its magic before you apply anything else. Now, when I leave this on overnight and I do not apply anything else over it, my skin is not dry, it's not tight, it's not uncomfortable. It's a strange feeling if you're used to slathering on tons of skincare at night. But trust me, just use this leave it and the next day your skin will be really fresh, really smooth and your pores will be really, really tight. If you are new to glycolic acid, you're not sure about investing this much money in something that's quite this strong, then you can go for something just slightly milder and see how your skin takes to it. And uh, my suggestion would be to try a smaller bottle of Pixie's Glow Tonic. And this is a 5% glycolic acid formula. However, again, the pH level is just slightly higher than something like this. So you're not actually getting a full 5% strength. It's probably closer to about 2% glycolic acid strength. So it should be fairly easy to tolerate unless your skin is extremely sensitive. Now there is one other popular acid and that is lactic acid. That is a very smoothing and hydrating AHA. So it's a very good option as well. I just happen to gravitate more towards glycolic acid on a regular basis simply because um, glycolic acid has been proven to actually stimulate collagen and help to thicken your dermis over time. So for the long-term benefits, I think glycolic acid is a better investment. Now, lactic acid, something like Sunday Riley Good Jeans, that is really strong as well. But I find that great for a quick fix. So if you have a big event, you know, use that for a couple of days and you should get really smooth glowing skin temporarily. Now, if you want to go specifically into the pores and clear them out, then nothing is going to do the job better than salicylic acid. There are tons of affordable drugstore products containing salicylic acid, but you do want to look for at least 1-2% to concentration because that's a good enough dose to really see results within a day or two. I think a lot of people misuse salicylic acid in the sense that they wait until a blemish has formed before they apply it. Now, salicylic acid is better as a preventive product for acne. So you want to use it before your pores start clogging up because this is an acid that is able to go into your oil glands and sort of clean it out and dissolve the oil plugs. So if you already have an oil plug that is inflamed, that is infected, then 
obviously, you know, the salicylic acid is not going to do that much. My favorite way to use it is before the problem occurs. So, you know, once or twice a week for maintenance or, you know, daily in the week leading up to, you know, that time of the month when you know the zits are going to start popping up, start applying your salicylic acid gels or masks and you should be able to minimize or even completely prevent a breakout. One of my longtime favorites is the Dermalogica Overnight Clearing Gel. Look at this bottle, it is so banged up, all the markings are almost gone. Now I travel with this one and this is what I reach for, you know, when I think my skin is starting to get a little bit congested, the weather's been a little bit too warm or I've been working out more and I start to see you know, my skin texture is not looking as good as I'd like it to, I start using this. Now besides 2% salicylic acid, this also contains niacinamide and biotin to also reduce inflammation and stress in your skin. This is an expensive formula. I think you can find it now on iHerb for a pretty good price. I think like 50 plus sing dollars. It's still expensive, but this huge bottle is 50 milliliters and you use a tiny dot each time. So this bottle has lasted me close to a year. This second product is a newer one for me and I really, really like it as well. This is the Ordinary Salicylic Acid 2% Mask. Now, if you've tried the Glam Glow Deep Cleansing Mud Mask in the white jar, this is suspiciously similar to that one. Now, this also comes out as a thick, black, lumpy cream. You just spread it out, leave it dry for 10 to 15 minutes and then rinse it off. But if you're a little bit crazy like me, if I see a small zit kind of starting up somewhere, I will apply a dot of this over it and just leave it to dry overnight. It actually accelerates the drying process or actually just straight up minimizes that zit very quickly. Essentially, I'm using it similar to how I use those Mario Badescu drying lotions. If you happen to have persistent issues, and by that I mean, you know, you always have a handful of zits at any point in time, adding acids to your routine is going to help, but it's not necessarily going to get rid of the entire issue. In that case, I would actually suggest that you explore adding a retinoid into your routine. Two types of retinoids which are specifically good at targeting clock prone, acne prone skins. The first is retinol dehyde and please remember this name if you have acne prone skin. Now many people are familiar with the name retin A or retinoic acid. Now this is a prescription only drug which is prescribed for acne prone skin and some people also use it for anti-aging like myself. Now, retinaldehyde is a precursor of retinoic acid, meaning your skin enzymes will need to break it down once to convert it into retinoic acid before it starts to work on the skin. Now, a lot of you may have seen retinol serums and products on the market. Now, retinaldehyde is proven to work up to 11 times faster than retinols, so it's not necessarily stronger always, but it is definitely quicker. The other very important thing you want to take note of is there have been several studies done on retinol dehyde, which found that this particular compound is better at inhibiting acne bacteria. So even though this was originally made to treat severe acne, somehow or other, this one is better at killing acne bacteria. So this has that similar benefit of increasing your cell turnover. So your skin is smoother, you get less clogs, but at the same time, it just has this enhanced benefit of killing the acne bacteria itself. If you still prefer to use something that's pretty much prescription strength, but you don't want to go to a doctor, you should be able to locate something called Differin Gel in pharmacies these days. It's not expensive. You don't need a prescription. Uh, often in Singapore, you will need to go to the pharmacist and ask for it specifically because it's not out on the counters, but you do not need a doctor's prescription to get these anymore. The active ingredient in this is adapalene, 0.1%, and adapalene is a second generation retinoid, which is supposed to be able to give you the results or similar results to retin A, but do it in a slightly gentler way. So you will still get the exfoliation, you will still get the inhibition of clog formation and all that, but it's supposed to give you less side effects, so less itching, less peeling. 
However, public service announcement: if you are using any acids or retinoids in your routine, you have to add a really good sunscreen or sunblock into your routine in the daytime. Please do not go out in the sun after using things like these without any added protection. This is because your skin surface often gets thinned out as the cell turnover is increased. So you can be slightly more photosensitive, and you do not want to increase your risk of developing hyperpigmentation in the sun or just getting any extra damage because you didn't protect yourself. Now, the final group of products I'm going to talk about are soothing products. Now, these are kind of optional. If you have good skincare already, you can just work some of these exfoliants or acids into your existing regime without having to change anything else. Niacinamide is vitamin B3. It's a fantastic antioxidant, anti-inflammatory ingredient. It actually helps to soothe and reduce inflammation in your skin, which is fantastic for acne-prone or clog-prone skins. Now, I usually suggest that you start at a mild dose of niacinamide because at high doses like 10%, which is uh, this serum by the ordinary, it can cause some thinner or more sensitive skins to really flush. Now, I cannot handle the 10%. However, niacinamide works best at around a neutral pH, which means that this is easy to buffer. If you have a hyaluronic acid serum or an antioxidant serum that you already like, you can actually mix one part of this with one part of that and you know buffer it down to 5%. Now niacinamide generally is a good ingredient for clog prone skins. One, because at slightly lower doses, it is a very powerful anti-inflammatory. It will help to take down inflammation and swelling in your skin. And two, because it actually helps to work on hyperpigmentation in the long term. So if you have a lot of acne marks that you're trying to fade, this does double duty. So those are some of my tips and tricks for getting my pores under control. Please remember that this is based on my own individual experience and also a few friends or followers that I've helped over the years. It will obviously not be the perfect solution for every single person because all our issues may be very different. However, I do hope that you still found some of this to be useful knowledge. And if you have your own experience to share and holy grail products that you go to, please share them with us below. So that is it. I'm going to leave you guys here. I hope you guys had fun and I will see you in the next video.